I'm supposed to be in sin. Why am I practicing it? Now, let me see if I can get to the, let me cut through the chase. Is it okay if I cut through the chase? There are systems who baptizes. There is a Catholic system that baptizes. There's a Baptist system that baptizes. There's a Church of God in Christ system that baptizes. May I ask something? Now watch, this is very important. Were you baptized into those systems or were you baptized into him? Here's what has to happen. You see, I remember at 12 years old, I was baptized into a system. And I thought for sure that I was going to be okay. And I tried my very best not to sin. Matter of fact, I got to the place I started counting my sins. And when my sins got too innumerable, I stopped counting. <coughs> you know what happened after that? At 12 years old, I gave up. Because I realized that I thought I was about to get something that I didn't get. I thought that when I got down into the watery grave, now nobody taught me this, I thought I was going to be perfect. I thought I was going to be all right. I thought it was real. Anybody listening? But what I didn't realize was I was being baptized into a system, not into him. Now, thank God he didn't allow me to consume myself with it. I'm grateful. But there are people who are consumed with a system and not with him. Now, this is the amazing thing. Now that you are saved, you take the same baptism that you had inside of them and you act like it's inside of him. And now you have never been washed of them and you're still trying to operate for him, but you got them on you. Somebody help me here. The reason why so many of God's people who God called out of tradition and religion get stuck is because when they were baptized, they were baptized into a system and that system controls their thinking. And so they get what we call save, and instead of them getting inside of him, they stay inside of them and try to walk in him. Oh, somebody, I, I may as well shut down. I may as well shut down. I just may as well shut down. And it's amazing to me how you say you're in him, but them is controlling you. My God, my God. I recall, I used to ask people, have you been baptized? And they said, yes. They were baptized into them, but not into him. And you see, as long as them is in you, then you got to listen to them that control you. And him who's supposed to control you will not be the dominant factor in your life because circumcision hadn't. Somebody help me here. Did that, was that clear? Go to Romans 6. Let's start with verse 1. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in what? What? Shall we continue in sin? Now let me say this to you. 
What may be a sin to you may not be one to me. So we got to understand, I don't need to judge you based on what I perceive sin is. Because I may perceive eating certain things as a sin. For instance, I know I can't drink. There's some things I can't do because I perceive them to be a violation to my conscience. But because I don't do it, that means you can't do it. I'm not going to say it's a sin if you do it. Did you get that? But I know I can't do it. And I'm grateful that I don't do it. But there are some things I know that should be a sin for all of us, which are sins. But this is what you need to understand. What the Father is doing and the laws that he wants you to keep are the ones he put in your heart. Not just the ones he gave to Moses. Because the ones he gave to Moses was a foundation for what he put in your heart. For the laws, for instance, John the Baptist could not drink, cut his hair, and eat certain things, which Jesus could drink, cut his hair, and eat everything. So if John would have done it, it would have been a sin to him. Jesus doing it, it was no sin to him. So I cannot tell you that this is a sin, that's a sin. There are some things that the Bible gives us a list that we all should practice. Fornication and adultery is everybody's sin. Matter of fact, in Acts chapter 15, it tells us that the Gentiles should not practice fornication and idolatry. So if I go to a church that tells me to bow down to a statue, that's practicing something that I'm told not to practice. And if this system was created in the first century, then it should have known that they said in the first century, don't practice bowing down, talking to nothing other than Jesus. They say they got started in the first 1 BC. That was the year of the church. And the year of the church, around 50-something 45 to 50 something AD, they said, don't have no idols. But yet they created idols when they were told not to have them. They took Jesus off the cross and put his mama holding him. Somebody help me here. They said not to marry when he said when he was alive to marry. He said, call no man father. And they call. If they were there when Jesus was there, how come everything Jesus said not to do? Somebody help me. It is amazing when you create your own system how it leads you not to him, but away from him. Now you're in the book of Romans, chapter 6. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What happens? God forbid. So now what is sin to you? I don't want to get in that list. But what is sin to you? When you violate your conscience, it will allow you to feel it and to know that it's wrong. For there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth you understanding. So your spirit is going to lead you and guide you into something. Not some of it but all of it. So you're telling me if you are a spirit-led person that your spirit ain't got enough God in it to lead you out of what God said you shouldn't be in. 
You mean to tell me your spirit cannot tell you that that's a lie? Hmm. Your spirit that's inside of you that's supposed to be able to recall truth is not telling you that fornication is fornication and adultery is adultery and hatred is hatred. You're telling me that that which is inside of you don't have the power to lead you and guide you. <clears throat> you see, what you must understand is not what you've been taught by whatever tradition. You must understand what the word is saying so you can set people free. Know the truth. And the truth that you know intimately is what sets you free. Hearing truth and knowing it is different. You're hearing truth, but I don't want you to hear it. I want you to know it. I want you to study it. I want you to see whether it be so. So that you can now apply it to your heart and, and be the beneficiary of a truthful lifestyle that receive, receives the blessings of God and not all the curses. So when people look at you, they will look at the blessings of God that made you, what the Bible says? Made you rich and add no sorrow to it. I'm not looking to wake up one day and everything gone because I believe through my giving and, my, and studying the word and doing it the way God said, he gave it to me. That's why I don't go around fearing what man shall say or do to me. Because I believe the word is stronger than any lie. You don't have to believe in what people say about you if you're standing on his word. That's what made Jesus so powerful. He was standing on truth. And he understood truth shall prevail. But let's go on in this. God forbid that we walk in this. How shall we who are, what do you mean? What are we? We're dead to something. What is it I'm dead to? How come in tradition sin is alive? Hmm? And how come if my leader who is alive to sin and he's leading me, what is he leading me to do? You must understand, you cannot lead people to sin. Oh, I can't help nobody. How can you tell me you are a child of God, a leader in the kingdom of God, and it is your responsibility to lead me to what God says we ought not be doing? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into tradition. You see it? Y'all see it? That ain't what it says. It says you were baptized into something, but it wasn't tradition. What is it? How many of you were baptized into Jesus Christ. And how many of you were baptized into Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Pentecost, whatever you were baptized into? May I submit something to you as Christian leaders? There are people who've been baptized into tradition who get saved but the tradition has more power than the salvation. You know why? Because their heart has never been stripped of the tradition that controls them. Somebody help me here. And now God is moving on tradition. <clears throat> Instead of tradition getting baptized and stripped of its flesh, 
it allows itself to accept the flesh and walk in the revelation of the principles that has no power because the tradition controls them. You must teach people how to come out of what they're in because they will be the, become the beneficiary of a devastation. Here's the amazing thing. The amazing thing is they believe they are right, but they are being blessed with the wrong. Notice I say blessed. In other words, they're thinking it ought to be going good for them when their reality is all falling apart for them and it's all being destroyed. And when you think you're all right and it's all wrong because God is judging it, you can't get no help because you are fighting God who cannot be beat. When you put your belief in the way and you walk in it, and you can, and we have, you get the penalty. I've been there, I know. And believe me, there's nothing worse than living a lie. This is the lie I'm talking about, against the truth. And see, when you are living the lie against the truth, wait a minute, there's a way there's a what? There's a way. I am the truth, the light, and the way. But then there's a way that seems right. And there are many of us in the seem right way. Oh, Lord. Am I enlightening anybody here today? Many of us are in the in in the way that was presented to us. And guess what? We embraced it. We loved it. But it wasn't the way. It was the way that seemed right. How did I get caught up in the way that seemed right? And I've given my life to it. And I've walked in it. And instead of me growing, I'm falling apart and dying because I'm in a way that seemed right. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Who was I supposed to be baptized into? Was it Catholic Jesus, Baptist Jesus, Church of God in Christ Jesus, or whatever other kind of Jesus there is, or was I supposed to be baptized? And do you even know what the baptism of Jesus is? Somebody shout with me here today. The problem with us is when you are walking in a lie and you fill yourself up with that, that's all you know. Now let me tell you something. When you are baptized into another system that promotes sin, you cannot do anything but sin because that's what you were baptized in. So I'm not going to fault systems that were baptized into the wrong thing. That's the way you want to roll. Now let me tell you this. It makes no sense for you to go to hell and not commit no sin. You see, I don't understand why a person would tell me he's an atheist and get married. You see, marriage is for honorable people. You're going to hell. You may as well have all the fun you can get in the 70 plus years you're going to live because after that, you're going to go to hell. Live it up till you die. Did you get that? I don't fault a person who's going to hell and who's a sinner. 
Because if you are a sinner on your way to hell, that's what you're supposed to do. Matter of fact, you can't even get saved until you are a sinner. Religion tell me to be good enough. Salvation tell me to be bad enough. Isn't it amazing? Good people don't go to go get don't get saved. They go to hell. There is none good. Why callest thou me good? Good ain't gonna get me there. You see, you think good is good based on what we perceive as human good is. But good, spiritually, is I could do what I want and think it's okay. You see, you see, you see, <clears throat> I'm going to do what I want based on what I perceive you to be. Two neighbors the other day in many we was fighting each other and one shot the other one because the one shot water in his car and he thought he was okay to go shoot him and kill him. That's good because he had no business pouring water on me. Now that's stupidity, but that's okay because he poured water on me, I shot him with a gun. Tell me how that makes sense. But they've been fighting, trespassing each other. Come on somebody, didn't know you're not supposed to do it, and didn't know you're supposed to love your neighbor, but they wasn't loving each other, so they ultimately shot and killed one. And the neighbor said, he was a good man. <laughs> Amazing. Isn't it interesting? Probably was in church too. I, I don't know if he was. I didn't hear nothing about that. Let me ask you this. When you were buried, were you buried in Christ? And if you were buried in Christ, how do you know it was in Christ? And when you were buried in Christ, did you bury into his death so that you can die to the old Adamic sinful nature that once possessed you? And if it's no longer there, how come you are practicing what should not be in your life? If the nature of sin is no longer inside of you, why are you missing it? <clears throat> why do you get mad and have to go get a drink or oh, boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever sin that your conscience may tell you not to commit and isn't it amazing when you get mad with God you go sin people get mad with the church people they go sin they go sit on a Friday to the place called the club not the church and have a good time with the club people. And they love on the club members, called adultery or fornication. And I'll be back Friday. And they dress up like they're going to church, put their perfume on, and sit down at the club table, put in their tithes and their offering. Don't ask how much it costs, just whatever it costs. They don't say ah, it's too much, just whatever they ask. Now, I don't know what a drink costs, because I never said that. But let's say a drink costs $5. They give you a shot, right? That bottle might have cost $10. They give you a $5 shot. By the time two shots is taken, the bottle is paid for. So all the other shots in the bottle is free. And you sit there, and you buy 20 bottles that night, because you line them up. You go to the grocery store and get a can of beer and a bottle of water, and the water costs more than the beer. You go to the club, and the beer costs, I don't know what it costs, $5, $10, $8. I know at the, at the, at the game, beer costs, what, $8? A glass of beer, a bottle of beer costs $8. Now, if I go to Walmart, the bottle of beer costs a dollar, and I go to the game, it's eight dollars. They didn't charge me seven times, and, and, and it might have cost them 50 cents. I don't know. And you know what? I ain't never seen them people holler and say, I don't want that old high beer. They get two or three of them. They buy cases of them, and there's only three drinks. 
Nobody goes and holler, man, it's too high. I ain't buy it. They enjoy it. They buy the T-shirts. They buy the, all the religious, I mean, the sports clothes. They buy the caps, the shoes, and the hats. Nobody complains. But when they come to church, they give $2 because they can't afford to pay no more. It's amazing what system we're in. We have to begin to demonstrate that this is real. And now my daughter tells me, and she always says, Daddy, come go with me on a Friday to the club so I can show you your preacher friends. I don't want to see them, dear. I don't want to see you there, let alone them. But I want you to go tell them you're my daughter. If you want to hide that, don't hide it. Go tell them who you are. Go sit down with them. One preacher told me, he said he didn't know that was my daughter. He was about to hit on until somebody told him who she was. Amazing. Hmm. One person said, if you're out in the club after 12 o'clock, you must be a prostitute or a whore. My daughter liked to be out at the 12 o'clock. Moving right along. It's amazing what we do when we're mad with the church. Did you get that? It was not the tradition that led you astray. It was your heart. <clears throat> I promise you, when you stand before God, you will not be in a room with nobody but you. And you will not tell God what they did you. You will only tell God what you did. And you won't have to tell him anything because he will not speak with his mouth to your mouth. He will speak from mind to mind or spirit to spirit. You will not have to say a word. You will see it all. You will know it all. I'm not looking to stand before him to determine whether I go to heaven or hell. I'm looking to determine what my blessing will be. That is the reason why I must work while it's day, for when night comes, when I'm dead, I can no longer work. But I am going to do everything to determine I get a good position. And hopefully I do something so good that it will be passed to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. Hopefully that I will leave a good legacy that will that'll be passed down for generations to come. That's what I'm working on. I want to leave a legacy that will be passed down and that there will be always a, a, a man of God, a prophet or apostle in that generation who will speak truth and not a lie. And no matter how wicked people get, I want there to be a prophet, apostle in my seed line that will tell the truth. And they will be able to look back to that old crazy man who started it, and he did not bow his knee to foolishness. We're in so much trouble today. <clears throat> Therefore, being buried with him by baptism into, who am I buried with? Tradition? Denomination? Or am I baptized into Christ? And the Bible says that like Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of, of the Father, even so we also should walk in something called sinful life. We should walk in something called sinful life. We should continue to do what we've been doing. Hello, somebody. How shall we who are dead to sin continue to walk in? You see, God said, Jesus says, I'm going to build my church. What is it that Jesus is building and what is it that we are part of? And how come what Jesus says he's going to do is so different from what we are a part of today? Know the truth. How about this one? Buy the truth. How much your truth costs? No matter what it costs, pay for it. Buy the truth. 
Y'all bought a car? What's the most you spent on 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 a car? Twenty-three thousand. Let me ask you this: What's the most you spent on a car? How much? Fifteen? Fifty? Have you ever bought fifty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars worth of truth? Isn't it amazing how we will spend more for a car and nothing on the truth? Now, we're not going to even ask you what you spent on a house, a pair of shoes, or a dress. Anybody ever spent $1,000 on a dress? A gown or something? You did? Okay, anybody else? The Lord said there's five people that could sew a thousand dollars. Not me, but you can buy a thousand dollar dress. Can't buy a truth, but you can buy a dress. You still have the dress? You don't have the dress? Mm. But you just sold a thousand dollar seed, it's still being in, in the ground producing. Buy the truth. Mm. I wonder what truth costs. Why are we buying lies instead of truth? We are buried with him. Let, let me say this to you. We all came out of something, uh, just about all of us. We were all baptized into whatever it was we were into. In other words, in order to get into it, you had to be baptized into it. May I submit to you the reason why you are suffering, one of the reasons why you have never been baptized into him, but into them. And you may need to get baptized into him so you could take them off of you. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ. Now, now watch this, watch this, watch this. Remember John the Baptist was baptizing, right? Y'all remember that? And people were coming by leaps and bounds. Even Jesus went. Hmm. But let's go into Acts chapter 19. Hold your thought in Romans. Let's go to Acts 19. Let's see if I can get you somewhere today. <clears throat> 19 and 1 of Acts says, And it came to pass while, it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, We have not heard so much, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then? What? 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 What's the rest of that? Oh, who were you baptized under? And what did he say? Read on. What baptism? John's. But there's another baptism. You didn't even realize in the book of Hebrews that they had an S on baptism. So here are the believers who were baptized under John, but they got what John was able to baptize them and give them. May I submit to you, you were baptized into something that could only give you what you got. Read on. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on who? On Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were, they were baptized. May I submit to you, 
your tradition is not the baptism you should have. And it's amazing that you are trying to serve God. Okay, okay, let me watch this with the wrong baptism. <laughs> Can I help you? And the reason why you have to keep doing wrong is because you've been baptized in a sinful baptism that does not separate you from your sinful life, but allows you to continue in it. And the reason why you're not walking in the truth, you got to teach this, the reason why you're not fulfilling the promises, the reason why you don't have no peace and joy, because your baptism and your heart is wrong. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe, I believe, I might be wrong on this, so you may need to check this. I believe, I believe, I believe. He said, while you are looking at what people do, I believe, he says, God looks at what should be baptized. And you know what should be baptized? The heart. Anybody listening? So the problem is, I'm trying to, to serve God, stand, stand up, Walker, please. Come, give me that. Stand, turn around, face, face you, let your back face me. How I many of you know this is her traditional church co co coat? That's her Baptist coat, or her Catholic coat, or her traditional coat, and this is the coat of Jesus. She's trying to serve God with two coats. She's trying to do God's will with two baptisms, or with no baptism, or with two, or with one. In other words, you say, but you've been baptized, but you were baptized into a tradition and not into Christ. And you didn't strip off or repent of your tradition, you still carry it, and you're trying to walk in God. So now when sin comes, it's all right to walk to the left, and it's all right to walk to the right, because it's going to be all right, because uh, your tradition will allow you to do this, and your relationship with God won't allow you to do that. So I'll justify why I did it, because I can't feel guilty because of what I did. I wish I had some help up in here today. Thank you, Walker. Thank you. I wish I had some help up here. So now what you've done was created your own religion. There are so many God people who have created their own religion because they now afford themselves the opportunity to practice what they want and do it the way they want to do it and say, I'm all right, and judgment is coming. And there's very few people that will tell you the truth because you're not buying the truth. You're investing in all kind of things, but I want you to stand before the Father and see what he'll give you for buying a $35,000 car or a $100,000, $400,000 house. I want you to, to tell God Look what I have accomplished. And when you stand before the Father and he said, I thought I told you to do this, and you told me you didn't have money, but you spent 400000 50000 10000 on this, and you told me you didn't have money for me. Buy the truth and sell it not. Hmm. It ain't that you can't build a building. You just spent the money on the wrong thing. I wish I was talking to somebody up in here. Isn't it amazing how you're trying to serve God with more than one coat? And every time truth is told, the lie overtakes it. You hear truth, then the lie comes. I read the Bible, you heard me say I read the Bible. And it was telling me something, but my lie was telling me something different. And for years I struggled with the truth, which was the word, and the lie that I was sold. 
And one day after years of struggling and battles, I said, I am going to follow the truth no matter what price I have to pay. And the truth that I started following set me free. I told you there were words I could not read in the Bible, bastard and hell and damn and shitta, S-H-I-T-A-H. I couldn't even read that word. I passed it over. But he kept saying, but it's in the book. But my mama told me those were curse words. He said, son, it's in the book. But I don't care if it's in the book, it's still a curse word. Do you not understand it's not a curse word? Do you know the difference between a cuss and a curse? No, you don't know, because you don't know the difference. You put more power in a curse word than you put in, I mean a cuss word, than you put in a curse word. Your mouth always cursing people and telling people they ain't going to make it and saying stupid stuff. And I, you can cuss me all day long. You can call me an MF all day long. But cursing is worse than cussing. And your cuss all day and you curse more than that they ain't gonna make it cursing people putting evil over their heads that's why every day i wake up i decree and declare there is no weapon formed against me that shall prosper and every tongue that comes after me is already condemned. You are condemned. I don't have to worry because the only curse that will come on me is the one I open the door and not the one you decree and declare. Somebody help me here. It is amazing, if I may say, it is amazing how we don't understand truth and how we're buying a lie. And how God is calling us out of the lie to walk in the truth, but we're still baptized into the lie and we hadn't gotten rid of it. Did y'all get that? Understand the baptism and all that? What you think about that, Benita? Right. What I just discussed. Talk louder, yeah. <laughs> We can't hear you. You don't have to be afraid. Oh, let me ask the preacher. What you think? Oh, please ask me. <laughs> what you say? Oh, your throat? Okay. I said, please ask me. I'm asking you. I want to baptize you. folks in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I want to know what I did wrong. <laughs> well, what were you baptizing them in? I baptized them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I would like to know what I did wrong. What? I baptized a lot of people. Okay. What were you baptizing them into? I know the formula you quoted to me just now. You see, she don't know the difference between the formula and what she's baptizing them into. What were you baptizing them into in the name of whatever you were baptizing them into? I was hopefully, hopefully baptizing them. Hopefully. In, hopefully I was baptizing mm -hmm. them in the truth. Mm -hmm. and I don't, Pat, your leg ain't going to get nothing for me. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I'm just kind of a little playing with you a little bit. I, I don't mean to do that, but I do mean to do it for the rest of the people, not just for you, because people watch. And uh, I, I had to counsel them about mm -hmm. repentance okay. and about sin mm -hmm. before I baptized them. Mm -hmm. They had to be counseled. So we talked about repentance and giving your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm to be baptized into the name, what's the name? You tell me that the name is the title? So you're telling me your name is Mother? You're telling me my name is Son? No, I'm saying, I'm talking about Christ. 
I'm talking about what the Bible says. The Bible the says baptized. The, the Son, which is Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Well, then, what is the name of the Father? What is the name of the Son? Jesus. What is the name of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Christ. Lord Jesus Christ is what we baptize in, not titles. But that's not the point I'm making. That's another revelation. Maybe I'll give you that next week. What about what we were baptized into? You were baptizing them into a system or into the kingdom? That's the question I ask. And so you were baptizing them into a system. Watch this. Watch this. It doesn't matter what you baptize them into. If it was a system, it wasn't Christ. It wasn't right. Now, 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 now. If you can go to the Bible... And show me where it says baptize into this, 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 or that, then it's okay. Forget what I just said. But if it ain't in the book, then you can't do it. You got to do what the book says. And the book tells you how to do it. Just follow the book. But we don't follow the book, we follow the system. And that's why they say you go down, dry, and come up just as wet, sinner as you could be. You should have went out in the rain. <clears throat> Anybody listening? Anybody getting anything? Hmm. Lord Jesus. Cabo Satalamanda Sekere Brake Alamanda Sekere. Then Peter said unto them, Acts two thirty-eight, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name. Well, let's go there. Acts 2, 38. Read it. Who have it? Who have it? And Peter said unto them, and Peter said unto them repent, repent and, be baptized, and be baptized. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. How many? 238 of Acts. How many? Everyone. Some of you. Everyone. Okay, everybody that's going to be a part of what I'm doing <clears throat> by the Spirit, this is what you got to do. You have to repent, be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus. In the what? In the, name of Jesus. In the titles of Jesus. In the title? In the name. Oh, in the name. But if you don't study the Bible to find out what his name is, why are you calling them his titles? Because you don't know his name. Because if you say my name is Father, that's not my name. If you say my name is Son, that's certainly not my name. Now my daddy called me Son, and my son called me Father, but that's not my name. <clears throat> but if you don't study the Bible and you don't know the name of the Lord, and you don't know how powerful that name is because you never studied it. And they, they had a place where they couldn't call him nothing because they didn't have a name for him because they didn't know who he was. And he began to introduce himself as Lord, as Yahweh, as power, as, as, as the invisible one. And the Bible decrees and declares, and you read through the scriptures, see how many times the word Lord appears. What does the word mean? Lord, it represents God. Jesus represents the Son. And Christ represents the anointing, which is the Holy Spirit. It's the three in one. It's not baptizing in the titles, 
but baptize it in the name. Because the titles does not give you power, the name gives you the power. The Bible says whatever you do, in what? Colossians 3.17. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the title, in the name. So you don't know the name of who you're serving, you don't know what you're doing. You don't have the right to baptize. <clears throat> what is the name of the person you're serving? What is the name that they use? Here's in Acts Peter, the apostle Peter, who was taught by Jesus himself. He gets up and tells all the believers, 3,000 of them, he says, this is what y'all need to do. Baptize, we're gonna, you need to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Follow the pattern. Follow the pattern. Follow the pattern. Follow the pattern. And, they, and verse 41 says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day that was added. Somebody help me here. And, they were, and the next verse says, They continue in what? What they continued in? They continued steadfastly into the apostles' teaching. They continue in the apostles' teaching. Not tradition, but the apostles' teaching. Somebody help me here. Is it in your Bible? Not in your tradition, not in some man-made system. The teaching of the 12 men that God raised up. Hmm. In Acts chapter 8, verse 16. <clears throat> verse 15 says, Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. And for as of yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only were they baptized in what? In what? They were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. What do you see there? You see it while we're following the tradition and not the word. But remember, tradition is a man-made system. Wondering why it doesn't work? Because it's not the Bible. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the titles. <laughs> then laid their hands on them and something happened. Hmm. What happened? They received something. They received something. Kalabra satalabraka. They received something. Hmm. Acts chapter 10, verse 48. Can any man, verse 47, forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Huh? Huh? In the name of who? The In the name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? Lord, that's God. Jesus, that's Son. Christ is the anointing. The pattern is in Scripture, in the book of Acts. Read it, study it, and find out. Why are you teaching what's not real? Why are you buying a lie? Hmm? Why are you buying a lie? Hmm. Anybody listening? Hmm. Kele brosa karamanda setele manda satalabaka. 
Let's go to Acts chapter 11. You see, if you follow the pattern in the book of Acts, you'll begin to see where, how the apostles work. Because there's two things you need to learn about Acts. It is the Acts of the Apostle, and it is the Acts of the Holy Spirit, not the Acts of Tradition. The problem is we don't study it, we don't know it, therefore we find a substitute. May I submit to you, get rid of the substitute and get the reality. He says, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, send, uh, send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be what? And, that's verse 15, Acts 11. And as I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with something else. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And so for as much then as God gave them the light, now, uh, uh, the light gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus. What was I that I could withstand God? What is happening here? God is doing something great. What is he doing? He's moving, in, he's moving by the Holy Ghost upon the Gentile believers. What is the name that they're using? It's not the titles, it's the name. Everybody say, it's the, name. it's the name. It's the name that we use. It's not the titles. I'll say it again. It's the name that we use, not the titles. It's the names that we use, not the titles. Kale bro satalamandaka. My God, my God, my God. And so, know ye not that so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, was baptized into his death. And that is what you and I need to understand. We are here to teach Jesus, not tradition. We are here to teach Jesus and not tradition. I'm not here to argue. I just read the Bible. You believe it how you want to believe it. But if you don't buy the truth, you're going to buy the lie. And as a result of the lie, you'll have the judgment. Buy the truth and sell it not. <clears throat> any comments, any questions? Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, not tradition. I didn't come to teach you tradition. I came to tell you the truth. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, that's why I was thinking to say we perish for the lack of knowledge. We perish for the lack of something, the yes. lack of knowledge. And you thought that because she said she always was taught that it was the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And I say, why? Because that was what she heard. The pattern is in the Bible. Why don't you stick to the Bible, not what you heard? It's in the Bible. You read it. Go do your study. Go look at it. Follow the apostles. They continue steadfast with the apostles, not with tradition. Before tradition came, before doctrine came, before man-made systems came, it was the pattern that they used. Look at the pattern that they used and got the results. Look at the pattern we use and we don't. You got baptized. Were you baptized? How many times you were baptized? You were baptized the first time in the what? And why were you baptized in that? What was that? What religion was that? Baptist. Baptist. So you were baptized in a Baptist religion, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So you went back and got baptized in the what the second time? The same thing. Same thing. So she didn't get it fixed either time. <laughs> and that, unfortunately, is what's happening. You read it in the Bible. Why do you do something different in the Bible? But you say you love God and you read the Bible and you want to walk in truth. Why are you walking? So here's what happens. We got men of God.